government fails, but individuals succeed. It took me a long time to figure that out. I spent years as a consumer reporter calling for government to prevent ripoffs, to pass a regulation. It took me 20 years to realize that does more harm than good. But my next guest is smarter than I. He understood that years before. Presidential candidate Ron Paul has done more than just about anyone to defend individual liberty. He joins us from the campaign trail. So, Dr. Paul, how's it going? You're in Berkeley, of all places, where I think of people as hostile to free markets. Oh, the bastion of capitalism right here in Berkeley. <laughs> Actually, uh, we have a real nice crowd, so we're very pleased. You get lots of students turning out? Absolutely. Uh, we've been to three universities here in California, and the turnouts have been fantastic. You know, five, six thousand, one time close to seven thousand. But don't look for any reports in the newspaper. It hasn't shown up in the newspapers yet, so uh, we have to get the message out some other way. Well, 7,000 certainly is an unusual crowd, and I would assume these, uh, I would wish these students understood your fiscal issues, but it's mostly because they want wars stopped? I, I think it is, but boy, I spend a lot of time. I, some of my speeches will go 45 minutes or so, and the whole purpose or my goal has always been those who are interested in personal liberty and their anti-war and talking to them about, well, if you're for individual liberty in the social sense, you have to be for individual liberties in the economic sense. If you want your, to lead your life as you choose, you ought to be able to spend your own money as you choose, and there should be an incentive system. So I try to put this package together, because for so long, probably close to 100 years now, we've had people think that there's economic liberty and social liberty, and they're two different things, and two different groups defend each half, and I don't think it'll work if, unless we put it together. Well, let's talk about economic security. I think our biggest problem, I think, is that Medicare is going broke and Social Security, too. President Obama said we would not be a great country without them. What do you say? Well, we're going to be a broke company with it. And if you're broke, it's not a very great country. And I think what we're witnessing today is that the country's broke and nobody wants to admit it. And that's why they're still fighting over a pie that is shrinking. On a CNN debate, you said you'd cut a million, you'd cut a trillion dollars right now, and you basically were ignored. Yes, yeah. yeah, because I see, I see us being in a debt crisis, which is a result of a spending crisis, and a lot of Republicans claim they care about it, but they don't cut anything right now. The proposal on the table for the Republicans is to balance the budget in 30 years. I just sort of laugh at this. I mean. Uh, you know, the communists used to only have five-year plans. We have a 30-year plan that balances the budget. No real cuts. And even this modest cut from Paul Ryan is being called cruel social Darwinism by the president. And that resonates with people. Well, it, it does. And even though I didn't vote for the budget and I criticize it, I sort of empathize with his problem. You know, he doesn't really cut it, but look at the grief he gets. Now, you want to pull our troops back. As I certainly agree. We, we have 50,000 soldiers in Germany and 36,000 in Japan. I don't know why they need to be there either. But let me push back on some of these issues. You say it was right to go to war in World War II. It was right to retaliate in Afghanistan. But these other interventions are a mistake. But some would say our interventions in Kosovo, Bosnia, Serbia, Grenada, and Kuwait, weren't they a good thing? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, we, we don't have the authority. We don't. Uh, some people might argue that look at a wonderful turnout in Iraq and, and uh, the mess in Afghanistan. No, there's long-term consequences, but the rule of law is, is probably more important than a token success by bombing people and killing a bunch of people. Who knows what would have happened if we had not been there? It might have come to a conclusion a lot sooner with a lot of less death, death and destruction. So I think we have to protect the rule of law and not allow presidents to go to war without the consent of the people through a declaration in the Congress. Thank you, Dr. Paul. I really admire your stamina to campaign away. I want to tell the audience that the last time you were here, I asked you if you were tired of this, and you said the only thing you minded is you didn't get to exercise as often as you like to. And I ask you, how often do you like to exercise? <laughs> Twice a day, I like to walk in the morning and ride a bike in the afternoon. And when I don't get it, my adequate amount of exercise, I get very grouchy. So I try to work it in all the time. Thank you, Dr. Paul.